This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. Every day is just one heartbeat away from a headline. This is Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffin-Daffer. What do we know about the other allegations about William Farwell and, and Richard Devine as, as well? I know they have not been arrested, they've not been charged, I know they've, they've stepped down from their positions. Uh, but there are allegations that are floating out there that uh, there was some involvement there uh, with them, with with Sandra. Yes, there are allegations that they were involved with sexual trysts, essentially, with her. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just this whole idea that she was somehow being passed around to his uh, twin and his, his buddy is sickening. Um, do I think that that could have happened? Yes. Uh, um, I mean, just the fact that they stepped down and so forth, they're being looked at. But the question is, is it criminal? If obviously, if she was 15 and this occurred, that statutory rape for yeah. both of those characters. But but was she having consensual sex with them uh, at uh, the age of consent? Mm -hmm. That's the first question they've got to answer. And then second, to me, did they have any part of this uh, cover up? Because remember, it's pretty much helps them out, too. Right. Yeah. I mean, for her not to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I find that all very, very suspect. And and I just hope uh, and I know the Bureau will. They are going to get the bottom. There will be no rock uh, not unturned in this case. I know it's still an ongoing investigation. And I know they, they did state that in the press conference last week that there, there could possibly be more arrests because this is not done. I guess if we already have. Uh, you know, one down. We have Matthew arrested and charged. Why not the other two yet? Is there just not the evidence there yet? Do they have to keep digging more to find? I mean, it's it's quite a an allegation to make um, out there without there being a lot uh, a lot of beef to it. Well, there's a lot more to find, and remember, they to me uh, stretch this statute to its fullest degree, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know, murder of a of a victim witness. Right. It, it normally you find this in, in mafioso type cases where you uh, try somebody or you sorry, you charge somebody federally when they've killed one of your witnesses. Mm -hmm. This wasn't exactly that. Right. This was saying that she was molested at the age of 15, which is a federal crime. And he killed the witness and the victim. Mm -hmm. Right. To cover up the crime. So they stretched this this really to the nth degree. But Tony, what I think should happen, and I can't imagine it won't, I just can't imagine the Commonwealth isn't going to come back and charge Far Farwell with two counts mm -hmm. of a first degree murder for her baby and, and for Sandra Birchmore. I think that would at least in some part help alleviate uh, all the uh, ill will against this DA's department and, and the police departments that are involved. There's a lot that needs to be corrected uh, out there. I mean, what's your take on, I mean, just looking at some of the internals of this, of how this went down when uh, the person that's named as person number two, which is a friend of Birchmore who called the police saying, hey, uh, I'm concerned you have an officer over there. These are the allegations uh, or what I've witnessed from my friend. Uh, I, I think you should investigate this, look at this. It didn't go to HR. It didn't go to a commander. It didn't go to chief or somebody who would be above this to start looking in on it. Uh, and that's person number five is the dispatcher who got that information. They took it directly to Farwell. What the, I mean, what, I mean, this could, is this just how they operate of like, let's go directly to the proposed perpetrator and see what they have to say first? Well, you know, when looking at cases like this, Tony, I will say, there are complaints that are so unfounded and bogus against police officers that filter into departments daily. Sure. It's it's really unbelievable. And and but nevertheless, when you have a complaint like this, you have to investigate it. And the last person that should be notified is the person that is, you know, the subject of the allegation. I, it's. You know, when you see something like this happen in a department and 
you, at least as an FBI agent, you just don't see anything like this within the bureau realm. Mm -hmm. And then working uh, 15 years detached to other police departments, never saw anything corrupt like this. Mm -hmm. But it's out there. And I know that from working public corruption for years. Right. You know, when you're on the out, when I haven't been a part of anything of seeing anything like that firsthand, only investigating it after or while it's occurring secondhand, if you will, or not secondhand, but in that a different capacity. And so if you're asking me if I'm surprised, no, Mm -hmm. heck no. Unfortunately, small little departments like this, listen, Tony, most of these officers, and I haven't done the background of Mm -hmm. everybody that's a Stoughton police officer back in this time. Mm -hmm. Most of them are straight out of high school. Yeah. Like they were buddies on the football team. You know, they all know each other is or teeny towns and, and little towns that all surround each other. And they they get almost no training. They go through a small police academy and that's it. The training stops there. Yeah. You know, the FBI has a program called the Law Enforcement Training for Street Survival that they started and that has huge amount of funding where uh, FBI agents go out and train local officers mm-hmm. on how to conduct investigations just like this, mm-hmm. whether it's homicide, how to tell the difference, how to conduct your yourself in terms of uh, shoot, don't shoot situations. That's the primary thing they do. But they branch off into investigations as well. My whole point is, is that um, they don't ha- they're totally untrained. Yeah. Uh, and I would say that the public unfortunately, often doesn't have police officers that have any experience that are conducting these types of investigations. Yeah. And we're sitting here hoping for the best. And we think that, oh, yes, they they know what they're doing. They're going to handle this correctly. And, and person number five here, the dispatcher who informed Farwell uh, of the allegation, was that person corrupt or was that person just ignorant, I guess is the question, which I could see it being very just ignorant. Like you were saying, these people were, you know, likely uh, went to high school together. They're on the football team. They're in the same small town. So they're still doing the same small town stuff into adulthood. And who knows? The dispatcher could have been, you know, Jeannie, who they had the class in English with a couple years ago. I want to let you know, Matt, you know, there's, there's so many ways where I could see this being just utter ignorance and, and the way that and then it enables people like this to be able to get away with things undetected because they have such power without many checks going. Yeah, you said it perfectly. And for anyone who wants to see an insight into it, you know, in trial, we saw this happen with Detective Proctor, in a sense. Yeah, He started uh, texting all his high school buddies, you know, details and, and things he should have never been texting about the case and, and saying, you know, horrible things uh in these text messages and that's the sort of kind of relationships i think that go on with these small town departments and their buddies yeah and it's the same type of deal i could just see you know this dispatcher saying oh gosh got another huckleberry here now mm-hmm. they're saying you you know you had some affair with an explorer yeah, you know? yeah. And, and laughing it off and him laughing it off but that's where things have to quit and or have to change and i i think tony it's really hiring outside police uh, chiefs in these departments and, and, and with the money they're making, they actually make, I I looked into this, I thought, well, they probably just weren't very well paid. They're pretty well paid. And I just can't imagine that they can't get people with college degrees with people who have more uh, in, in their game (laughs) than just being a buddy on the force. I mean, that, that's really what it feels like in some of these towns. It feels like all the jocks uh, went and became police officers. And uh, if you didn't go to college, you didn't go to anything else. We took this training. We're going to stay here. We're going to work here. We're going to make this money. And suddenly we have all this power and we have, you know, opinions on people. We have vendettas to settle. We have all these things to do around town. And now there's suddenly the power. And, and it, when it goes unchecked, you know, I guess the, you know, the bar for what's acceptable just keeps being pushed back and back and back because they realize oh, I can get, what, get away with this, get away with that. Oh, I get away with this. And it goes on. I mean, literally for years, but, but it's a decade in this situation with nobody being the wiser. And, and is that just because there's just so much trust there 
and everybody's kind of covering for everybody. And, and does it that nobody wants to think the worst in each other that, you know, everybody kind of bends the rules a little bit, but nobody's would go that far. I mean, do you think they were shocked by this when, when this arrest came down, when the feds went in and finally arrested him? Do you think the police department was surprised by the gravity of what, what this guy was up to? I certainly hope that they were surprised. And I, and I also want to make a couple of comments here. First of all, Farwell is far behind your average, you know, uh, uh, just, you know, Mayberry RFC mm -hmm. uh, uh, jock or whatever out of high school. And again, I, I don't know all of his background. I do know he was in the military. I do know he served on another police force before he joined Stoughton. So he was actually probably more trained and more qualified than most candidates that the Stoughton Police Department. Uh, so I do want to caveat it with that. Yeah. I know he actually had a pretty strong background. But what Farwell had that I don't think most any of these officers have is a complete depravity, yeah. you know, a absolute sick monster that now has a badge. I mean, yeah. that's what we're seeing. He hasn't been convicted, but that's what we're seeing is a sick monster. And I think that is very rare to have a monster like that, you know, in yeah. a position that he was in. So I wanted to make that point. And secondarily, I don't think we can ever broad brush. There is no brush strokes right now that we know of that fade over into the Karen Reed case. Mm -hmm. There just aren't. Sure. Uh, there's just, we don't have anything like that. No facts like that. Uh, but I wonder how far up the chain this could go. And I want to know what they find on this ME. Mm -hmm. Are we going to hear just ignorance yeah. or are we going to hear of, of a bad guy that yeah. had some sort of relation? Well, and, and then you got to look at it too. If that Emmy, if they're ignorant, well, then that plays to their advantage if they're just an idiot. Uh, but if there is some sort of collusion here, I think they're going to start looking back at every single ruling that that Emmy has done in their career uh, and go, hmm, is this accurate or is it not? Because if they're going to do it for one, you got to assume it may not be their first rodeo. All right, true crime addicts, let's cut the crap. You're knee deep in the gory details of your favorite podcast when suddenly a commercial hits like a bad meal. Seriously? You deserve better. Upgrade to True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, where you can binge without those annoying ads. Plus, get extended interviews that go deeper into the darkness and early access to episodes so you can be the first to know. It's like trading up from fast food to fine dining, but with more blood. So, go ahead. Search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and feast on the good stuff.